Hello YouTube, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is going to be a second series from our round of 16 from the WCS uh, Katwitz um, Championship, which was held just a few days ago. So I, I did the first one on stream, but I decided to continue off offline because simply there wasn't that many viewers. It was a terrible time today to do it. So let's continue off fresh here. We've got ourselves our second series here. It's a best of five again, and it's going to be Haas versus Firecake. So uh, this one is going to be a Pros versus Zerg. So two completely different races and I hope you will be interested in that. Now, of course, if you haven't done so already, leave the video a thumbs up just to show a bit of support and of course, subscribe if you are new to my channel and you want to see more of this. My League of Legends channel also linked over here if you want to check it out and if you're interested. So that's pretty much that. Let's jump straight into the game. So that's pretty much that. Uh, let's introduce our players. We are, of course, on Dusk Towers on the bottom left hand side here. We've got Firecake. Firecake is on Team Euronix Gaming and he is from France. Firecake appears to be going for a, an expansion early on, but Haas going for a proxy, a triple proxy, in, in fact. So Haas, who is on the top right hand side here of Dusk Towers, he is on Team Yo Flash Wolves. And he is from Taiwan, so somebody who I haven't actually seen in the past. Just to note, this dude is 18 years old, and he's got three years of professional experience in StarCraft 2. So this dude has been around from the very beginning, and God has the, or from the very beginning of his gaming career, rather. And he is doing bloody well to be in the round of 16. So let's see how our players play out here. Oh my God, Firegate has gone for a triple expansion. Oh no. Oh. No, Firecake, this is so risky. I mean, the one thing you don't want to do when... Oh, this is so nasty. I mean, usually against products, you're pretty safe starting off with a double expansion. But in this case, because there is a double proxy... Sorry, triple proxy, this is going to be so dangerous. I mean, he's going to have a lot of trouble getting this defended. As you can see, he's thrown down three spine crawlers next to his spawning pool. This is simply to fend off anything that is coming his way. And I think the three spine crawlers should be enough to hold off until he gets a sufficient amount of zerglings slash roaches. As you can see, there's a pylon on the way. There's also a, a forge here, so he might even continue off with a cannon rush. Now this base is at this point essentially forfeit, there's not going to be a whole lot he can do to defend off against this, but what is he doing instead? He's just running his Zerglings straight past those Zealots, he does not care about them, he just wants to go ahead and attack his opponent's base. So as you can see here, this base about to get destroyed, but the Zerglings are almost all the way across the map. This is one hell of an eventful first game here to start off with in this round of 16 games, so it's just the second one. Uh-oh, the Zerglings have gone back. Why have they backed off? Oh, there they go. I think that they're just here to... to yeah, it looks like the, he's just using those to basically prevent any sort of um, reinforcements from coming in. Also, he seems to be interested in taking out the proxy itself, so that might, of course, be a good choice for him. There's spine crawlers going down here. The Zealots, it's either now or never. The Zealots need to surround those spine crawlers or at least run past them. And that is exactly what they're doing. They're running past, and it looks like he's interested in taking this other expansion out. Now, this has been fully shut down now, so Firecake is in a good position. If he cancels this off, which I think he should... Oh, no. He didn't cancel it off. This is not great. I mean, this means that these Zealots are going to take it out quite nicely. That's a free base for them. But the Zealots are now stuck in here. The three gateways here are not going to be able to do a whole lot. And finally, these Zealots are going to get cleaned off. I think he needs to bring back his units just to basically let them get destroyed by the spine crawls once they try to move out. Because realistically, Haz has no economy. He's got himself a Nexus on the way. But at this point, Firecake, if he decides to go ahead and attack his base, he'll be able to keep him on one base for quite some time. So I think the fire kick definitely needs to bring on the aggression right now. These gateways are pretty damn useless at this point. He's just keeping one Zerg in there just in case Haas brings down a, a probe to reinforce or rather to build up the pylon again. But here we go, Mothership Core is in place. There's only what? There's a total of five Zerglings. And there will be the possibility to overcharge that pylon, so it's going to be very difficult to break through this. 
with such a small amount. As you can see, has also got himself a Stargate on the way. So this game is just full, on, absolutely full of action right now. So let me know, by the way, how do you feel about about such a, a fast, aggressive star. So I basically, I kept the the intro kind of uh, scene on for a little bit longer, just to have a word with you, introduce our players, of course, and um, then jump straight into the game. And obviously there was a proxy here, so the action came even earlier, but I think you get the point. I mean, it brought up the action a lot faster into the game. And I think it's definitely something that I might try to do in the future. Also, I'm going to reintroduce the question of the series. So, since we're starting a series now, every series I'm going to have a separate question. And, of course, I would really, really appreciate you guys answering the question of the series. This one, for this one, is going to be, um, if you could buff one StarCraft II unit, which would it be? Let me know in the comment section below. I would really appreciate your responses. I personally think that the one unit that needs a buff right now is probably the... Huh, I would have to say that the Raven, I think that it doesn't get used enough. I think that the the, the turrets that it puts down have too short of, a, of a, a duration. In the past, you used to just basically use them to basically put down a bunch of, of missile turrets, but that has just disappeared lately since the duration is like 10 seconds or something. It just runs out too quick. As well as that, I think that Zealots need a bit of a, of a buff in terms of mobility, not in terms of damage, because I mean, realistically, I suppose they do have legs, so that is kind of a, you know, kind of a kind of an iffy situation. You can't really buff them too much, because then they'll become a monstrous aggressor kind of kind of situation. So okay, if for um, for Terran, it's the Raven. Looks like these. Adepts also getting reinforced as well, so this is actually quite good. They're in a good position. These these uh, these drones would probably be better off being pulled off just to get a bit of extra damage onto them because so much damage is being done here to the queens and the adepts are just free to roam as much as they want. Moving on back here, there is one spawn a spine crawl here needs to get out of the range of it before it loses too many of these adepts. And as you can see, the oracle still in place needs to stop that attack, and there we go. He did. And this base is effectively being shut down for quite some time right now. This is actually really good. I mean, Haz has got no units left, but he has evened out the the the, the worker supply, despite the fact that he started off with such an aggressive um, aggressive proxy, which didn't really work out at all. Well, correction. I mean, you have to say that the aggression which he did with the the triple proxy. While it didn't do as much as he'd liked, I would say, it didn't win him the game, which is what you generally expect from from a proxy. It definitely evened out the supply in terms of worker. I mean, he got he went from three base Zerg to one because he denied both of those bases. So that was quite good, I suppose. And now that he's managed to do so much damage with those adepts, he's completely even there. I mean, 60 supply to 52 at 8 minutes into the game is definitely not a big difference. His roach is being used just to clean up these proxies. Definitely wants to get them destroyed at this point since last time, you know, this was brought up again. Was able to produce a few more units. Overseer is going to be able to see what's over here. He doesn't have enough energy for it to contaminate, so I'm not going to be able to do anything about this Twilight Council. And finally getting that proxy cleaned up. I mean, that took a while. The game finally starting to um, become a bit more standard. Got ourselves two oracles floating around. Not doing a whole lot. As you can see at this point, Haas has got quite a good base built up. He's got three bases. The army supply, uh, sorry, the worker supply is perfect for Farcake, so he's just about where he wants to be. It seems like he's actually building up a few extra workers, which is probably not what he wants to do. Because if you've got an army supply which is so big, he's got 72 workers. This means that. Oh, never mind. He's actually using some of those to build buildings again, so that's actually quite okay, I suppose. 
because Zerg units are actually a little bit weaker than, than Protoss. Just typically, they're they're a little bit weaker because they're they don't have the shields. They, as you can see, 145 health. Whereas, let's have a look at the Stalker. It's got 80 shields and 80 health. So, 80 of those units actually regenerate. So, you've got ourselves 160 health on a Stalker from from start. Uh, you know, from full health to dead. Also, the fact that they do quite a lot of damage and have a blink mobility. So let's go at the Lurker then, about to complete level 2 weapons for ranged units on, on Zerg, also about to complete. So he got himself a Hydralisk and Ravager army, it's going to be quite good against dealing with, with Stalkers and indeed Sentries since they can break down the force fields with the Ravagers. And he's putting down, oh! Nice pick up, I wonder was that intentional or was that accidental? But he managed to pick up one of these, um, one of the status wards. I assume he saw it be put down or something, I didn't actually notice myself. So it looks like a 5th base coming down here for Firecake. So I assume one of his bases is about to get mined out. No, he's actually fine. I mean, he's got himself the economy rolling quite nicely in all bases. 76 workers, he's got himself a Spire on the way and Hive. Now from Haz's side, he's got himself the Robotic Support Bay. Or Robotics Bay as it's called now. He's got himself a second, a second Robotics Facility as well, he's already got one here. It looks like he wasn't actually able to release units out of there, so he had to destroy that. Putting down a changing over here. Oh, this one Overseer getting destroyed, this one Zealot getting spotted as well. Or not Zealot, rather, the Changeling. Let's have a look. Firecake has got the superior army supply. He's got himself the Lair on the way, sorry, the, the Hive on the way. And he's got himself a Spire. Now, I assume the Spire is not going to be used for Mutalisks, simply because he... It's a bit late at this point. I mean, he's got himself cannons to deal with in the bases. He's got a lot of stalkers, so it's probably going to be used for Broodlords. Just look, there's a total of six gases. Eight gases. Ten gases in total. So, yeah, I assume that that's going to be turned into a Greater Spire pretty much immediately. Any moment now. He's got a lot of resources as well, so he probably wants to get a bunch of upgrades out as well. And there we go, Greater Spire's on the way, as I thought. Definitely a good choice here. So we got ourselves two Disruptors. Now Disruptors, again, are not able to fire the air, so that's that is quite a good position for him to be in. If he does, of course, decide to get those Broodlords. The only thing is that he needs a lot of time to get Broodlords up. Ooh, 34 Zerg is being created at the same time. So we look at the units count right now. One Hydralis, 29 Roaches, 9 Lurkers, so that's going to basically be used to turtle on up until those Broodlords come out. So yeah, there we go, he's got a big Lurker line over here. It'd be very, very difficult to break through this unless he got himself Disruptors or uh, Colossi. Good force fields going down, just picking off a few of those units. And a few nice gross of biles heading in return. Oh no, that is actually not great right now. He got a lot of his units caught behind that force field. Fire King. Oh, there's nice gross of biles. Oh, that did so much damage. In fact, he even got some of those disruptors down really, really low right now. As you can see, he's got himself the Zerg. Uh, sorry, the the corruptors on the way. Great aspire in position. So he's going to be able to get Broodlords very, very shortly. He's trying to bait his opponent right now. So basically, get those units to stand around this area right here. Because if he can do that... Oh... Nice pick off there. One Lurker getting destroyed. Oh, oh good pick off there. And those Disruptors, Purification Nova, not quite hitting the target like he'd like to. Six Broodlords are on the way. There's, of course, Yoinks on the way. Oh my god, I can't believe it. So much tech going down here. Beautiful game so far. Music is very suitable as well, got ourselves some very, very aggressive music sounds. And this of course is from, I believe it's from Wings of Liberty towards the end. One of the last missions has this, mission, uh, this music on it. Broodlords in the air. There was six of them in total, so there we go. Four more on the way. And at this point it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with. Broodlords. It's got level 3 ranged attacks as well, so this is going to be, of course, useful for both Roaches, for the Lurkers, and of course the Hydras if he gets any. 
which doesn't look like he's getting any. He got himself one on the field. And there we go, Lurkers are on the way. And what is he going to do now? The army supply is a little bit split up here for, for Haas. Broodlord starting to do a bit of damage. Broodlings following these units. The beautiful thing about Broodlords is their units are free. Oh, <laughs> nice purification over picking off a few of those units. Some very nice damage here. Needs to be very careful with those Broodlords though. If he gets a big blink underneath them, that might not end so well. And these disruptors need to be super careful right now. And what is he going to do here with these units? He's got himself so, so many air units, which is going to play nicely. I mean, Stalkers are not that bad at dealing with Broodlords. The only thing is that you need to get close. Now, getting close to Broodlords is a bit of a problem when you got six Lurkers underneath them. And of course, pretty much everything that comes along with that. So let's see, Broodlords going to start to do some damage. Picking off a few of those stalkers. That's a good choice for him. He's doing really good. And oh, here we go. We've got ourselves. Oh no, the disruptors. The disruptors are in the back. There are three of them. And two of them have been yoinked back. Two of them getting taken out for free there. And the army supply for Haas is getting worn down here. One free base is getting denied here. This is good right now. He needs to back off though. Not to get too aggressive onto this Zerg army. Because of course... He could potentially lose a little bit more than he'd like. And I want to see this engagement from as far as possible. Where is that? There we go. Just make it as far as possible because we want to see everything that's going on on the field right now. The Stalker's doing quite well, I have to say, to just basically stay away from the Zerg army. He doesn't want to engage them. Oh no! Oh no! This was a good catch here for Firecake with the Lurkers in the way. And that was absolutely nasty right there. He's got four Tempests on the way. I believe he doesn't have any yet. Oh, in fact, he does. He has four Tempests on the field. He's getting four more simultaneously. The only problem right now is that there's a lot of Hydralis in the air and there's a few Yoinks as well. So he'll be able to take two of those out pretty much immediately. But Tempests are good against Broodlords. Oh no. Oh no. These three Disruptors. Are they going to get caught out? Yes, they are indeed. He's going to see them. Is he going to focus on them? He's not looking at them. He's not paying attention. And those Disruptors do manage to escape with their lives. And there we go. We've got ourselves Yoinks going down. Three of those... Four of those Tempests getting taken out pretty much immediately. There should be four more somewhere over here flying on away. The Zergling army is running straight into the base. There's Stalkers in the way. Just Meat Shields preventing those Zerglings from running straight in. And they did manage to hold off against the Zerglings. The question is, oh, beautiful Purification Nova's going down. Taking out so many of those. But Firecake, with the absolutely overwhelming numbers, did manage to win that game. Beautiful play here from Firecake, just continuously moving forward. And I think that the Broodlords have made such an impact there because, of course, they are free. Once you have a Broodlord up, the, the units that come out of it, the Broodlings, are free. And they will continuously absorb damage when your opponent does an A uh, attack move uh, forward. And of course, you can't focus down all of the units because that is just too difficult to do. So that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more of my channel. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with our quick question of the series again. If you could buff one StarCraft 2 unit, which would it be? That is our current series. There's going to be a few more games with that, of course, until the best of five is complete. So that's pretty much it. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck, take care, and I will see you guys in the next video.